absolutely. So, you know, when we're talking about pandemics, right, the whole point with the concern around pandemics is people die when they shouldn't be dying. And what we've seen since 2021 is we've had this stepwise change in how many people are dying, particularly young people and particularly of cardiovascular causes. Mm. Um, and that has been seen globally, or at least in the West. Um, and it was being seen in Australia, which is a really critical part of this story. So Australia had very little COVID before Omicron arrived. Mm. So they were vaccinating when any problems with the vaccine couldn't be blamed on COVID because people simply hadn't had it. And there were parts of Australia where that was even like more extreme. So South Australia and Western Australia had a thousand cases in total across the entire states mm. prior to Omicron. So there was just COVID was not a thing. And yet in South Australia, there is this massive spike in cardiac admissions to hospital in 18 to 44 year olds, um, just you know, as they do the vaccine rollout. So the vaccine was clearly causing cardiovascular problems in the absence of COVID. Mm. And with a similar in Singapore, you can see this rise in mortality at that time, and it was cardiovascular predominantly, and it was before they had COVID. So, you know, we've got pretty clear control countries that show what's going on. And we've had the same here. Now we have had a sort of slightly more complicated story because the young in the UK had a bit of an excess mortality in autumn 2020. So, you know, I see that as a combination of coming out of lockdown when people have been under immense psychological stress, mm -hmm. deliberately by the government, and psychological stress causes heart disease. It causes, you know, the atherosclerosis that leads to heart disease. And that's a little bit of a kind of oddity because it's a sort of, to think that psychological health impacts physical health is a bit of a kind of jump in how Western medicine normally thinks, but the evidence base behind that is solid and has been established for decades. Right. Um, <clears throat> so that I think it was a largely that, and you could argue that COVID might have had an impact on that as well. Maybe it did, um, but you know you can't do anything about COVID. So that, that's not the problem. The problem is if you go and intervene with something you did not have to do and cause a problem with killing young people, that's the big issue. Um, and of course, you know, trying to um, show the evidence for this has, has been made way, way harder than it should be. Now we have the evidence, you know, we have plenty of evidence. And, you know, I'm pretty sad I can say this to you that this is what has happened. The vaccine has caused this problem. Mm. Um, but we don't have all of the evidence that we could have because it's, we're being blocked from getting access to it. And so, you know, when, when things were starting to turn south, publications that were being produced every week, they just sort of stopped. And, you know, things, things that started to show a different a story they didn't want shown, they just stopped showing it to us. And, and I'm currently preparing um, evidence for inquests for people who've died young of heart disease when they've just been vaccinated. And I'm pulling together all the evidence around the world that shows the story about what happened in these people. And you just think this is ridiculous. We've just got no stories, no evidence, no science from the UK. Mm -hmm. like, where were we? We just were sort of AWOL. We weren't actually doing any of these studies. Well, we were relying on all of the studies from elsewhere in the world. And then we've also got this crazy situation where, um, if, you, if you remember the brain clot story with AstraZeneca, we go back to that. We had a situation where nobody in the UK was said to have died from the vaccine, zero. The MHRA announced that based on Scandinavian data, some people could die from rare brain clots if they'd had AstraZeneca, just that one specific thing. Having announced that, doctors start putting it on the death certificate. Think, okay, this is the wrong way round. Like, how can a regulator raise a concern about a cause of death if the doctors only call it that cause of death when the regulator has raised a concern? Mm. You know, it's a complete catch-22. It was never going to get anywhere. And we you know that obviously that's continued with everything else. And because um, other people haven't called things out, we haven't got the evidence. And the thing with the brain clots is it was a very, very rare condition. Mm -hmm. So something that's exceedingly rare starts happening in a cluster. It's very easy to point the finger. But when you've got a condition that's common, like 
cardiovascular disease, you know, when you've got atherosclerotic disease that's common, people um, dismiss it too easily. They'll just say, well, you know, we've seen that before. We, we can, it's not a problem. And of course, any one doctor is, is unable to see the whole story because they'll think, you know, when you're a doctor, you, when you're practicing, you do sometimes have periods of some odd things coming through the door. And, and it's not necessarily representative, it's just that's what random looks like. And so you have to be able to actually have the confidence to you know, think that that might mean something and then talk to your colleagues and see if they're saying the same thing. And then, and you know, people talking about the vaccine was such a taboo that those conversations weren't happening. So then you never start to build a picture in the way that you normally could about a condition. And so then you're reliant on data and you know, we've got data that does show that there was a problem, but it's much easier to show the problem in certain groups like the young, because there's less of a problem normally. But if you're looking at older cohorts, because there's a lot more deaths of cardiovascular disease, generally trying to prove an increase becomes much, much harder.